our next bit is possibly going to be some audience participation. I don't know. All I know is that we've got a Britain's Got Talent semi-finalist in the room, and it would be really wrong of us not to use his skills at a children's activity provider conference. So you are about to be woken up. Did you all enjoy lunch? Yes, I did hear some good feedback about the gluten-free, so we did good. There we go. So you're all full. You know it's the graveyard shift now. You're not going to have a chance to fall asleep because I also know that children's activity providers don't do graveyard shifts. They do lots of energy. Look, you go in, demos, getting the stretches in. Should have got an army camp workout, shouldn't we, or something. Right, so our next speaker is none other than John Parnell. Everybody give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's lovely to be here. It was great to be asked to be uh, guest speaker. I've got a few notes. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to tell you about marketing and things like that. I'm going to tell you something that uh, might help you, but you might be able to use it to help the children that you work with as well. Um, clicker. Yep, that's me. That is me. That is me from a still of a video. That's me in the middle there. <laughs> so, what skills do you currently have? Can you juggle? Can you ride a unicycle? Can you create blue models? Can you hula hoop? Can you run a quiz night? Can you give a talk? With, there's all these skills that, as uh, children's activity providers. You probably need to have one or two of them. I'm sure you can do a quiz. I did a quiz. I was in a pub one night and the lady said to me, do you know anyone that does a quiz? I said, why? She said, oh, well, the guy that does it on Sunday, he can't do a Thursday and I'd rather have a Thursday. I said, uh, yeah, I, can, I do quizzes. Do you? I said, yeah. Never done one in my life. I said, yeah, I can do a quiz. All oh, right. She said, the other thing is, the guy on Sunday, he charges too much. I said, what's he charge? Oh, he charges 150 for the night. I said, oh, I only charge 125. I got two years out of that, every Thursday night, 125 quid. <laughs> so, can you juggle? Is it no? Or is it no, not yet? Is it that you won't? Is it that you can't yet? Could you learn if you wanted to? Do you not want to? Why not? <coughs> Why not? <laughs> Because you can learn to do lots of different things. I learned to juggle when I was uh, 41 years old. At the age of 53, I learned to do the hula hoop. And uh, here I am now. 2009, I started teaching in schools. And, well, hey, I'm 71. I've got no plans to retire because I enjoy what I do so much. Keeps me fit, keeps me active. And, uh, yeah, so think about learning something new. And uh, has anyone heard the saying, practice makes perfect? Hands up. Right, forget it. <laughs> it's wrong. It's a great big lie. There's no such thing as perfect. I hate it when teachers at schools tell their children, practice makes perfect. You're setting them up to fail. There is no such thing as perfect. No golfer gets the ball in the hole every time. Even if he's only that far away, he sometimes misses. No dart player always gets the treble 20 when he aims for it. Doesn't matter how many times you practice, there's no such thing as perfect. No tennis player wins every time they hit the ball. Forget perfect and practice. I could practice with this hoop for the next year twisting. At the end of the year, I'd be really good at twisting, I still wouldn't be able to do the hoop, because that's not how it works. To do the hoop, one foot in front, leaning back, when it touches your tummy, you give it a push. If you do it right, with the right size hoop, no problem. I can teach you. Seriously, come and see me later at the back. I can teach you to hoop in less than five minutes, in some cases, two minutes. So, if practice doesn't make perfect, what? 
So, have you tried to learn any of these things? What's stopping you? Did you try but give up too soon? Why did you give up? Did you try and fail? And what is failure anyway? People think that when they're learning to juggle and a ball drops on the floor, oh, no, I can't do it. I failed. No, that's a learning point. When something goes wrong, you are learning. Your brain is learning. Nobody yet has got on a bike for the first time in their life and ridden it without falling off. You get on, you try again. Learning to juggle, learning to hula hoop. People are scared to have a go here. Oh, it might fall to the ground and people will see it. Doesn't matter, it's a learning point. I'll tell you something else about learning. Hands up if you can drive a car. Brilliant. People say to you, can you drive a car? You say yes, I say, oh good, can you give me a lift? They don't say, ah oh, yeah, but how long did it take you to learn? Doesn't matter if you learn to do the hula hoop in two minutes or if it takes you a week. When you can do it, you can do it. Think about this for yourself and for the children you work with. I'll tell you now, the people that learn things too quickly don't appreciate the skill. I have had three people in the last 25 years, three people learn to ride a unicycle in less than 15 minutes. Most people take four to six months. It took me six months. I can do it now. And when I ride it, people say how clever I am. But they don't realise the six months of struggle I had. Same with the hula hoop. Yeah, I'm the hoop guy. Do you know what? It took me three months to be able to do that. It took six months to be able to do that. And it took another three months to be able to do that. I went on Britain's Got Talent, I got through to the live semi-final, you could do that too. So, blast off. Begin learning active skills today, overcome failure, feel, that fear. The problem is, you're so worried about failing that you give up. And failure is when you stop even trying. Failure is when you give up trying. Keep trying until you've got it, okay? How long does it take to learn? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. There we are, there's the practice makes perfect. This is what I use instead, the five letter P's. I do not say practice makes perfect, I use the five letter P's. Practicing properly produces positive progress. If you practice the wrong way, you are not going to get any better. If you practice properly, and continue practicing properly, then you should improve. I'm still not using the word perfect, you want to get better. Be the best you can be. And even if you do become the best in the world, like somebody called Williams in the, in the tennis, getting beaten now, you're not the best forever. Be the best you can be, practice as much as you need to, and be encouraged to try and learn new things all the time. I learned to juggle when I was 41, on my honeymoon. Well, you've got to do something to pass the time. When I was 42, I learned to walk on stilts and ride the unicycle. At 47, I learned to walk the tightrope. At 53, I learned to do the hula hoop. So I've also, along the lines, learnt to do balloon modelling and various other things as well. I also do some magic around the tables at weddings and things like that. So, you know, life is there for living. Get out there and learn new skills. I actually saw an advert for someone that was saying, come along for £200 for the day, I will teach you how to run balloon modelling workshops at schools. And I thought, I can already do balloon modelling. I already work with children, I can do that, so I just went off and did it. And that's one of the more popular things to do in the holiday actions. So I hope you've found something interesting from that. Practicing properly, you can either say produces or promotes. Practicing properly produces positive progress. And that's it, that's me. Don't forget, come and see me. I will teach you how to do the hoop. And if not, why not? <laughs>really can i have never ever been able to hula hoop but he got me doing it so do go and have a go it is brilliant